Hi there, in this continuation lesson from last time, we're going to look at more complicated patterns, try and create tables and then eventually formulas to then use. So let's get right to this. Now, the, the more complicated patterns, instead of just being multiples of 2, 3 and 4, I've got something else in them, a correction factor. But we'll have a look at this pattern first. So this is a, a pattern made up of matchsticks. So we've got one square uses four matchsticks. Now, before we made two squares, we just used eight matchsticks, and it's quite simple. But this time, the two squares are joined, in which case you'll need seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven matchsticks. And again, you join another one on for three squares, and it's ten matchsticks. So each time, you kind of need three more matchsticks, you can see here, to make the next square instead of four. So let's look at that in terms of a table, because the table will help us to get a formula. So we draw the table up, and we say one square, four matchsticks, two squares, seven matchsticks, three squares, ten. And if you chuck on another three matches at the end, you'll get four squares. So it seems to be going up in threes each, each time. So we can, we don't really need to, this bit up here anymore. So five would be sixteen, and six would be nineteen. Okay, so we've recognised it's going up in threes. Now the whole idea of the formula, to get the, the number at the bottom, we've got to do something to the number at the top. Now what you tend to do is look down the way. Again, we did this in the last lesson. And whatever's happening going down the way should happen to every single pair of numbers there going down the way. Now sometimes it's easier to start maybe with the second one. In. You can start with the first one in if you want, but I'm going to have a look here and think. Right, because it's gone up in threes, what we used to do was just multiply by three. So you would times by three and get six. But this doesn't work, so I'm looking for seven. So when you're doing this, you're thinking it's gone up in threes, I'm going to times by three. That is not going to work. Okay? It's almost there. It would get me to six, but I really need to get to seven. And if you look at this one, if I times by three, I'd get to nine. But I really need to get to 10. And if I times by 3, I get to 12. But I need to get to 13 and so on. Times by 3, you get to 15. So we need to do something else, which is called a correction factor. So we're going to times by 3 first. That's the first thing we're going to do to the number of squares. But that gets us close to the right answer. Let's go back to the 2. It gets us to 6. Now, what do we need to do to get to 7? If we're already at 6, how do we get to 7? Well, your correction is add on 1. Now the correction number can be an add or a takeaway, and again we'll look at another example later, but let's just double check it works every time. Times by 3 gets you to 3, add on 1 gets you 4, that's working. Times by 3, add on 1. Times the top one by 3, add on 1. Times the top one by 3, add on 1. It seems to be working every time. Again, times by 3, get 18, add on 1. This is the formula. Now what I tend to do to, to simplify the formula, I tend to not write the multiply in. I'll show you in this kind of algebra question here. I tend to write the formula like that. I just think it's easier to answer questions on. Instead of writing three times S, we know from algebra that when you've got stuff next to each other, that's a multiply. So let's answer these two types of questions. Use the formula to find how many matchsticks there will be for 40 squares. Now again, we would never draw that, but this is what you could do. You can see, well, I know S is 40, and I know it's been multiplied by 3. So I'm going to write that 3 times 40, but I need to remember to add on the 1. So I'll do this bit first, which comes to 120. And I'll add on the 1 and get my final answer, 121. Right, let's look at the other type of question you might be asked. So use the formula to find how many squares there will be for 100 matches. So this time I'm telling you this side is 100. So 100 is equal to 3 times something, add 1. Now this is a, a type of equation, uh, similar to an equation where you would have something like this. I'll just type it, say 3x add 1 equals 10. Now what we'd encourage you to do is take away 1 from both sides here, and then divide by 3. And this is the same idea over here. I would like you to take away 1 from the 100 first. The most common error I see is people divide first, but you want to take that away first. So it's 99 is equal to 3s. And you think 3 watts make 99. Some of you may have the answer already, but that's just a divide. And it's 33. Okay, let's go back to the start and look at another example and work it all the way through. So we'll start with this kind of pattern here. It's kind of like wee houses, I suppose. We've got two rectangles 
three triangles in the top. Three rectangles, one, two, three, four, five triangles in the top. Four rectangles, seven triangles in the top. So let's draw a table out and see if we can work out what's happening. So two rectangles was three triangles. Three was five, four was seven. So from the table, I'm noticing an increase of two each time. So I would imagine five is going to be nine, six is going to be 11, and seven is going to be 13. So we know it's going up in twos. So that means that in order to get from the top to the bottom, if it was a simpler pattern, I would normally multiply by two first. So I would normally do that, multiply by two. But again, that doesn't work. Because two times two is four, and three times two is six, and four times seven, uh, two is eight, and five times two is ten. It's not getting me this bottom number. So again, what I need is a correction factor. So I'm going to start off again. I'm going to times the number of rectangles by two. And in this Again, you can look at the first one or the second one. Any of them you can look at. Let's look at this one here, for example. If I do 7 times 2, I get 14. How do I get back to 13? Well, you would take away 1. Well, let's check it and see if it works in this one. 6 times 2 is 12. How do I get to 11? Take away 1. 2 times 5 is 10. How do you get to 9? Take away 1. It seems to be working in every case. 2 times 3 is 6, take away 1 is 5. So there's your formula. Again, what I tend to do is write the formula just as 2r, tt equals 2r, take away 1. I just think it's easier to use when you're doing these kind of things. Right, we'll look at two types of questions again, and that'll be the end of the lesson. Okay, so use the formula to find how many triangles there will be for 30 rectangles. If we're told there's 30 rectangles are 30 r's. So I've got to double it. And take away 1. I'm going to write it like this. 2 times 30, take away 1. Do this bit first. 60 take 1, 59. Okay, other way around. Use the formula to find how many rectangles there will be for 79 triangles. So I know that's 79. And I've got, um, well, it should be 2, 2R. Two Let's see. We'll just change that to R. It might be it might be um, R's and the rest of it as well, or S's. Sorry. Wait till I just pause that. Okay, I fixed it. Right. So seventy-nine is equal to two R. Take away one. Now, what you want to do in this case is do the opposite of the takeaway first. Don't divide by the two. Add one to the other side. Okay. So you want to say that eighty is equal to two R. You should be able to see the answer now. We have to divide it by 2. So 80 divided by 2 gives you 40 to finish.